Labyrinth. Yeah, we'll give God a certain limited amount of time. I don't know how many, but I'm sure I ain't gonna ask you to raise your hand. But I'm sure it ain't many of us that'll give God 50 days. I'm talking about constantly waiting 50 days. If God ain't came through in a week, and I think I'm I think I'm being real, real liberal. Because the majority of us ain't even going to give God no whole week. We're going we to pray a few days on it. And if we don't see something happening, well, Lord, well, Lord, oh, Lord, I tried. Lord, I prayed. I had one young lady to come to me, and she, uh, Overseer Johnson, she said, I, I, I prayed and I believe God, you know, and I, I had my, my pastor, he, he prayed for me too. And then and, and the pastor uh, asked me, said, well, uh, uh, you believe it? He said, yes, sir, I, I told her I believe it. And, but she said, uh, you know, uh, at, at my job, they were offering me an opportunity to go ahead and have a procedure done. And she said, well, I had went ahead and told them, well, you know, because I done prayed and I done got prayer and I believe God. And, and so I'm believing God and maybe they going to, the Lord going to do it through the, through the doctor. And I ain't saying sometimes that God can't do it like that. But she said her testimony was, she said, I went back to my pastor. And the pastor said, well, daughter, you remember it was a woman that had an issue for 12 years. So you ain't waited 12 years, have you? I said, glory to God. Now, that's, that's teaching some faith right there. So, so he told her, you ain't waited 12 years. Say so she told him, no, sir. So he said, well, have faith then. Believe God. Don't, don't be so quick to give in and look for another option. We've got to learn how to trust God for his word. And guess what? She's still here. That, that condition hadn't taken her out. And that was my word. So I said, well, then the man of God, your pastor, that's what he's doing. He's teaching you what I done taught him. To hold on to your faith. Listen, because the devil is always going to provide an option. He's going to always show you where the grass is a little bit greener on the other side. That's his job. To make, you, make your options seem like it's better than what the original is. Fifty days. They waited. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it wasn't so much of what God did with his spirit, but it was what God did in them. He calls a spirit of unity to be manifest. And that spirit of unity is what is manifesting even now. It's what's holding the church together. It's what's holding the kingdom together is that spirit of unity. 133rd Psalms tells us that that spirit of unity causes an anointing. It is the anointing of unity that flowed from the head of Aaron that went down to his beard even down to the skirts of his garment. 
And that flow of anointing yeah. is where God commanded his blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It didn't come by a miracle. Yeah. What you mean, Apostle? I mean that unity is something that takes time. Unity is something that calls for sacrifice. Yeah, it's a sacrifice to stay unified. It's a sacrifice to stay together. And that is what the covenant is all about. That is why our God is a covenant keeping God. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's a covenant keeping God because it was his plan from the beginning to be in perfect fellowship, to be in unity with his creation. That's what God wanted. Because Lucifer had and destroyed the unity of heaven. And God said, you know what? Because you done committed high treason, I got to kick your butt up out of here. And you know my glory. You've seen my majesty. You've seen my power. And because of iniquity, you wanted to usurp yourself above me. And that same spirit, the enemy tries to circumvent protocol in the church. Oh yeah, that stuff ain't just started happening, it started from heaven. Rebellion, disobedience. Discord, chaos. It started from the enemy in heaven. That was the same foolishness, the same mess that Satan did that got him thrown out of heaven. And so he said, what I'll do is I'll come down here on the earth and I'll start working in the pews. I'll start working in the pulpit. You know you ain't got to really do it just like the preacher said. He a man just like you. He put his britches on one leg at a time just like you. I know. I ain't lying. That, that, that's what, that's what the, the enemy will do. And, and and bless God, my, my, my melanated brothers, I'm talking about black folk. We, we seem like we have a hard time than a lot of folk because, you know, we done been kind of held back. We done been kind of mistreated and, and held down for a long time. So we have a problem sometimes with submission. Let me go to this side. I say us dog skinned folk, we have a problem sometimes with submission. Thank you. Yeah, I, I know it's in the house. See, yeah, we, we have a problem with just being obedient. Yeah, we, we, don't want, we don't want nobody trying to get too much in our stuff and, and trying to tell us what to do and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I, I know I done had to get to the point where I, I have to tell folks, Miss G, I say, uh, well, don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. Huh? 
I'm not trying to be all fancy and all that. I'm just telling you what thus says the Lord. Yeah. So, you know, don't, don't cop no attitude and get all swole up with me. If you got a problem, take it up with the master. I am that one. I am that sacrifice. If any man believe on me, though his skin was red as scarlet, I will wash. I will wash them whiter than snow. Thanks for joining us for another move of God on Ladder Rain. Well, we hope that this message has really been a blessing to you and that you'll consider partnering with us to continue sharing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. Partnering with us is very simple. You can donate online by mail or visit us in person to support this ministry's efforts. And as a token of our appreciation, we're offering one of my latest sermons or an archived sermon of our founder, Apostle Isaiah Revels. We'd also love to hear from you Please share with us how this ministry has really been a blessing to you and encourage others to tune in. We love you. God bless you. And we can't wait to hear from you again. Thank you for your continued support. Hey, you want to want to get all blowed up? You know, who, what, what he think he's trying to tell somebody? Hey, pump your brakes. Understand, I'm just giving you what thus says the Lord. I'm just telling you what the master said. I didn't write the rules. I'm just telling you what the rule book say. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and at the end of the day, once I done told you, then it's all for me. Yeah, it, it's on you now to ball in your coat. So, yeah, I... I I have a real serious problem. I had to tell my counselor, I said, hey, it ain't our responsibility to make nobody live holy. No. No. Uh-uh. It, it, it ain't our responsibility. The word of God said, let the wheat and tar grow together. So what am I saying? I'm simply saying that the best that you do, you still going to have some folk that going to be contrary. My daddy told me a long time ago uh, when I had just started step preaching kind of good and I was kind of getting where I was kind of liking to hear myself. Daddy said, yeah, son, you need to cut it off. He told me, he said, yeah, I done been, I, I done been all alone now. He, he said, all that preaching you're doing? He said, you can preach till you got water coming out your shoes. I said, my God, now, now, my daddy was a preacher. <laughs> he, <laughs> Dr. Moffat, you know he was some kind of preacher now. But I, I know I had never preached the water coming out my shoes. Daddy told me, he said, son, you get up, you preach the gospel, you tell the people what thus says the, God, what thus says the Lord, and sit down. Because he said, yeah, he said, them folks will sit down and listen to you hoop and holler and, and preach and do all that and still leave and got, die and go to hell. They'll still go on, leave from the church meeting, and go back out there and do the same thing that they were doing before they came to the church. Yeah, so 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 you you can't force nobody to live holy. You have to help them and tell them and teach them. And at the end of the day, it has to be something that they receive, that they accept. In their hearts, in their minds, in their spirits. 
and their soul. But God is such a covenant keeper that even when Adam disobeyed, he said, because I'm a lover of their souls, because I care so much about them, I have got to repair the breach. I've got to figure out a way to get my creation back to me. And he began to search high and low in the earth, above the earth, all throughout the eons of time. And he could not find a worthy sacrifice to mend the repair the breach between he and his creation. And because Jesus knew the heart, knew the spirit of his father, he said, Father, prepare me about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Father, prepare me about it. I see that you've been looking for a suitable sacrifice. I see that you've been searching for somebody to go down and pull your creation back into you because you are such a covenant God that you want to have a relationship with your prized possession. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I matter that much to God. I said, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God cares that much about me that he would send his only begotten son that he would send Jesus down to this old dusty earth to come back and make a propitiation in other words he was the sacrifice for my sins and your sins when nobody else could help Jesus say I'll be the sacrifice I'll be the lamb that was slain before the beginning of time. I'll be the prepared, a prepared sacrifice without blemish, without shame that could stand in the gap and plead my case that could stand in the gap and plead your case. Jesus, the only begotten son said I am I am, I am that one, I am that sacrifice. If any man believe on me, though his skins was red as scarlet, I will wash, I will wash them whiter than snow. Say yes, it's all about, all about your faith in Jesus. It's all about your belief in the unblemished lamb because he paid the price, because they stretched him wide and they hung him high. He stood there to the, from the sixth to the ninth hour and he died for me and he died for you. And there was no other sacrifice that could be found that was suitable that would make the, the exchange for our sins that will cover my blackness that will cover my unsatisfaction that will cover my immorality that will cover your lying tongue that will cover your lust for heart nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood hallelujah could pay the price for my sins for your sins and it was that covenant that God satisfied it was that covenant that satisfied God's judgment when he looked down and he saw the blood of Jesus he said that I will accept that sacrifice and it will cover humanity. It will go down through the eons of time. It was that blood that 
went down and hit the mercy seat. And the Bible declared that the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. It was that blood that went down to hell. And everybody in hell that believed the testimony, the testimony of Jesus, when he said, I am the one, I am the lamb, the lamb that was slain for me. All you got to do is just believe because of his blood. Nobody could do it but Jesus. Nobody could save me but Jesus. Nobody could deliver me but Jesus. It was the covenant that Jesus made from the beginning. That same covenant that God struck with Abraham when he told Abraham to prepare me a trench. I want you to kill these animals. Kill me a sheep. Kill me a, a goat. Kill me a turtle dove. See, what we don't want to realize is that true covenant is about sacrifice. That's right. I say true covenant is nothing more than an agreement between two parties that guarantees certain performance. And when you have a covenant, then it's only as good as the two parties involved. Now, in essence, in truth, a covenant is really for the weaker party. Really, when you think about it, the covenant that God made, it wasn't for him. No, no. The covenant was for us. But John, last time I checked, we the weaker vessel. We the one that have a problem with maintaining or upholding our end of the covenant. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that God's nature is true. God cannot lie. It's not a question of if he'll lie. It's that it, it, is, it is impossible for him to lie. Because his word is true. So watch this. So if God manifests himself into a person and walked in here and said, now this carpet is blue. Because of his nature, being that he can't lie, even though all the time we've been here, this carpet is red. But because, because God can't lie, as soon as he, before he get the word out, as soon as he say, but the, the carpet is already blue. I just want to help you think about the power of God. Think about the God that we serve and the awesomeness of the God that we serve. And the fact that we're in covenant with a covenant keeping God. We're in relationship with a God that brings about his word. He stands over his word. He said, I stand God. I watch over my word. I'm a watchdog. I'm a watchdog over my word. So if I said I bless you, I'm going to stand over my word. It may not happen when you want it, 
but because I'm a covenant keeper, I'm going to stand over my word and I'm going to make sure I perform just what I said. I swear I bless you. I swear I heal your body. Well, if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins, I'd like to take just a moment to invite you to do so by accepting him into your heart. I urge you to make this choice today and experience his loving and transformative power. If you're ready, invite Jesus into your heart by repeating this short prayer with me. Say, oh Lord, I love you. And Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of every one of my sins. Help me now, Lord God, to be the person that you chose me to be. I believe that you suffered, bled, and died for my sins, but on the third day you rose again. And because you rose, I can rise. Because you live, I can live. Thank you now, Lord God, for loving me enough to die for me, but having enough power to rise again with all power in your hands. Now, Lord God, I thank you for your salvation. I thank you for your restoration. And I thank you now for giving me another chance. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you can believe it, it's already done. Listen, connecting with a church that will help you grow in the faith of Jesus Christ is vital at this point. I would like to extend an invitation for you to join us here at the cathedral in Albany, Georgia, where I serve as a senior pastor, and we would be honored to have you to come and worship with us. Our services are held on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. You can also connect with us online at EFVM.org, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. If you are unable to attend our services, I encourage you to pray for guidance and direction and choose a Bible-believing church that will nurture you in your spiritual growth and development and teach you the ways of righteousness. Remember, this is one of the best decisions that you'll ever make in your life. Our thoughts and our prayers are with you always. We love you, and may God bless you on your journey. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into Latter Rain. We hope you have enjoyed the word this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please visit our online store at www.efvm.org or call 229-436-7707. To partner with us on our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please make a donation by clicking the Give link on our website or through the Givelify app. Once again, we thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, the Ladder Rain.